then I'm recording now. So hello, everybody. Today we have March the 16th and we have our user experience group meeting. And yeah, on the agenda, I have actually only three points. Uh, so first thing is the weekly status, the 339. I don't know if someone can say something about it. Can you say about uh, it something, Tim? It's the weekly, so because I am not involved. Otherwise, we skip the topic. Nothing okay. too exciting. Okay, then I would like uh, to skip this point, and then we have only two remaining things. Actually, only one thing is uh, the UI improvements from Jan and Tim. If you have something to share, and if there is still time. If, sorry, if there is still time, I think I can share some details about the uh, refactorings I'm making with a student of mine in the code coverage plugin. Okay, then, yeah, let's start with the UI improvements thread. Uh, Jan, would you like to mm -hmm. share your screen? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, that, um... Take it, everyone can see my screen. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, what's what's recently happened? Um, so right now we've got three merge requests up. Um, one for the buttons, which is still a work in progress. One for the updated breadcrumbs, um, and then one more for the uh, icons. Um, so the breadcrumbs uh, PR should be merged soon. Um, and that'll just update the kind of uh, drop-down links that we have across Jenkins. Um, and then hopefully the icons should be relatively soon in the next week or two um, at a push. Um, so that's, that's pretty much an update on the PRs the, right now. Is the model inside? Ish thing an issue that Daniel was asking about, or um, I've not seen if he's responded. Um, I think I'll just have to see how it works with plugins. Um, I, I've not personally checked plugins for it, so I'll have to have to see if that's a bit dodgy or anything. But I would have, yeah, I would have, I would have thought we would have noticed if it was dodgy. But mm -hmm. you know, it used to be in the JUnit plugin, but I removed it recently. Well, here's Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it makes sense to document this behavior somewhere in our developer. Mm -hmm. um, we Hello. Hi. Hi. Daniel. We spoke your name and you came. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to get that documented on the Jenkins um, kind of dev docs um, and then also add it to the UI samples and plugin, um, which I'll, I'll get done hopefully soon. Yeah. yeah, that's the only reason I hadn't clicked merge yet. Um, is they're talking about the breadcrumbs one, Daniel. Um, on whether we want to hold off any time or just Jan will in the background do some documentation and have a look at those plugins. Uh, because of model link inside copy and paste, mm. or yeah, just, okay. Yeah, I think it's, it's in a whole bunch of random plugins, I think, generally copied and pasted all over the place, but I haven't seen anything that looks weird. I mean, um, this seems to be just one part of a larger, it seems we're fairly light on documentation uh, kind of situation. And um, uh, something else that I thought about is uh, it probably makes sense for us to think about sort of the, the API or contract for plugins. Like for example, uh, CSS classes, perhaps we could introduce a naming convention there that indicates whether something is internal use only or intended to be used in plugins. So it's really obvious for someone who knows a very straightforward rule to tell, well, this should not be used in plugins and it's kind of 
akin to using restricted API in Java, something along those lines. Now, maybe maybe this already exists and I'm just unaware it does. I don't know when there's two underscores or an exclamation point or something in the CSS class, but um, perhaps uh, something like that uh, is, is also what we, what we could do there. Uh, I just fear that we introduce a bunch of changes here and plugin maintainers, for one thing, they do not know what they need to fix in their plugin. Uh, what version of Jenkins introduced the change? Like, for example, I mentioned something, you know, in which version of Jenkins did we add an icon that you want to use? Well, you need to look at the Git history for that. Um, and then they might end up uh, copy and pasting a bunch of stuff where we say, well, this was kind of internal use and now your plugin screwed in the next release because we are changing, changing it again to make it cleaner in core. So a few for me related um, topics here. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to having that documentation. I don't, I don't think it's an immediate prerequisite, but perhaps for the nearer term future. Yeah, um, for the CSS one, um, I've been trying to prefix um, kind of global um, kind of styles with just the Jenkins kind of word. Um, and then for kind of internal classes, just prefixing it with like app or something, just so plugin developers don't use it as it might change. Um, might not be the best prefix, but kind of that's what I've been doing at the moment. It's probably just worth writing that down on Jenkins.io mm. a little bit. I don't really know how you can how you document CSS classes when they're available so much, unless you have a whole public API documentation. Um, but, uh, um, so yeah, that's the CSS basically. Um, yeah, I need to hold a bunch of documentation. Just perhaps do not care too much about that. We have seen a lot of copy code, uh, copy paste of code that should not be copy pasted in the past that are private to Jenkins core, but people are still copy pasting that for, for their own plugin. When we are correcting a vulnerability in core, that plugin is still using the forked version that is not corrected with the vulnerability. So for CSS, it's even easier for them to copy the stuff. So I will propose you that if you want to have something reusable, create a jelly component. Otherwise, do not expect people to not use your stuff. They will do it at some point, so it's not your fault. So. Right, but if, if a CSS class is core internal whatever, we can tell the plugin maintainer, well, maybe this wasn't the best idea you've ever had. Look at what this says, right? It's right there. Sure, it will not prohibit it, um, but at least we give people who want to do it uh, the right way a chance to get it right. On the opposite direction there, is there any CSS class from core that we expect plugin to use? Model link inside. What do you mean with expecting? So there are a lot of classes that I would like to use in my plugins. For instance, the table uh, visualization. I simply would like to have my tables implement ta a Jenkins table. I hope. But in that case, that. you have a component, no? No, it's just a table that has the CSS class, pick table, pane, yeah. Oh, yeah. sortable, and a few others. At least it used to be until fairly recently. Um, model link inside, if you want the drop down next to a link to a build or whatever, or the classes to put there. Um, and there's just a ton of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, some plugins do their manual task implementations where it can be this debated whether that's a good thing or not. Probably not because there's uh, the task tag, um, but there are several where this just is part of the definition. I think with the widgets in the side panel, you also need to assume that you're in a table environment and need to add a, uh, need to start a row or something. So there's quite a few of those. Yeah, good example, thank you. 
Um, I've got a couple of kind of things to, to demo today, if that's all right. Should we look at the symbols just briefly and see what sure. people are thinking? Um, do you just want to open the PR quickly? Yeah, sure. Uh, I found something that you can do now. If you go to um, polls, you can just put your name at the end. So if you go to the URL bar and mm -hmm. just do slash and then just put your name there. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Um, so I've got the uh, PR up. Um, what was I that? To I, was, so I updated the change log this morning because it's not, doesn't just, I think originally it was just about the side panel, but as soon as you mm -hmm. touch the side panel, you touch all over the place. Um, so I just changed it to update icons. I'm not sure if we want to be a bit more descriptive, but um, mm -hmm. previously it said side panel, which is touching a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, I think so early, early done a whole bunch of feedback recently, which I think has been mostly addressed if you want to go down. Um, yep. I'm not sure if there's anything else that we want to do in this PR. If anyone else is planning to test, uh, I've had quite a bit of a go around it last night um, and ex like I experimented with the gray color. I'm not sure if it's too light or not. To be honest, it looks really good on dark theme. On regular theme, it looks okay. Um, but I see it, it's more, for me, it looks more weird when it's mixed in amongst other icons, um, which is something that we can improve as we go. But yeah, I'm not sure what do other people think if people tried this, looked at it recently. So so it's no longer blue or what do you mean? Uh, it is black in the side column and it's blue if it's inside of a link, which we've tried to avoid. Um, the context menu is still blue and that will be fixed in a follow up. Um, but no, in general, they're um, black or like a gray on dark theme, I think. Uh, so that's an, that's an example. If you go to Yarn, if you go, Yarn goes to the top, you'll see what they look like. It's not a full black. It's like 333, three, three, I think. Yeah, I, I think uh, on the on the side panel side, it looks okay with the black. Uh, what didn't look so good, I think, was the, the summary punctuallys, which are rendered in the middle. This was a little bit too black for my opinion, but yeah, this is something which is quite different for people. Some like it, some like it not. So maybe yeah. I can change it via a theme. <laughs> I think part, part of that is just about it fitting in with it. There's not very many of them fitting in. It looks quite different. Mm -hmm. And and the font, font awesome ones are quite a lot lighter. I'm not sure if that's something set by you, if that's just that font awesome icons are lighter. Yeah. Um, I'm but, not sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we all agree that we want to have these monochrome uh, icons everywhere, then the exact shade of gray doesn't really matter. We can iterate yeah. on that. Yeah. It's just if the if the feedback ends up being, well, it was more colorful and nicer before, then we're kind of you know stuck with it um, and and can't go back. And otherwise, uh, you know, the exact shade of gray we will iterate forever. Yeah, it's fine. No, I think it's good just to hear that it was more just about the summary panel rather than the side panel. Which I didn't pick out from the before, um, but yeah, I guess so. We've got four approvals, um, three of them from people testing it recently. So I'm not sure if there's anyone else that plans to look at it and provide any feedback, or whether we should look at shipping this um, during this weekly. I mean, um, I would like to take another look at this one. I mean, I've I've now approved the other pull request with the drop downs. So we can definitely include that didn't go out yesterday, right? That was no. uh, okay. So, so we can definitely have that in the next weekly. Um, and then the question is whether this needs to be in the same weekly. Um, could, could go either way. 
So I would like to take another look at this one. Or Sure. Yeah, we can wait for that. Uh, I think there's probably quite a lot of stuff that's related to this that will come out once this is there. So um, improvements and iterations. Um, this will be based on quite a lot of other stuff. Cool. I guess that was all I had on that one. Jan, if you wanted to show your demos. Sure. Um, but just to reiterate like what Tim said, there will be like a million kind of pull requests after this just to just to iterate and change the odd icon here and there and, and fix things because no doubt there'll be kind of issues somewhere, but it'll get better. Yeah. Hopefully. No, I've, I've got a decent sized PR to the credentials plugin to utilize it there because that was one of the main ones that looked quite out of place. Um, I've also been working on a branch just to add the custom symbols. So kind of plugin developers can add their own. Um, so it should fit in a lot better at that point. Um, but I'll open that up for discussion once this one's kind of merged in. Um, so a couple of things um, I've been working on kind of since the last uh, meeting. Um, been doing a bit of work on the UI samples library. Um, it's still, it, it looks like a mess just because the custom icons aren't being loaded on this branch. Um, but it's got a bit more content now. Um, and it's a bit more categorized. So trying to keep things kind of really simple, um, kind of addressing it towards a, a first time kind of plugin developer. Um, so kind of calling things like just check boxes rather than the Jenkins name for that, because Jenkins has some kind of odd choices for component names, but trying to keep it kind of straightforward. Um, so this is like the, the, the buttons page. Um, so ideally it shows you different types of buttons you can use. Um, and it'll also show you eventually um, the code to actually use these buttons on your plugin. Uh, so we've got a page for colors as well. Um, I assume, so I assume we, if, you, if you just go back to button, I assume we don't still use a hidden flash SWF or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it says something like, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it mentioned flash on that page somewhere. <laughs> yeah, positioning yeah. a hidden flash movie. I'm sure we don't do mm. that anymore. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, one question yeah. uh, one question to these uh, widgets are these useful in every context of Jenkins or only in the configuration page because I'm using for instance a lot of widgets in my uh, static analysis plugins and in the configuration of trend charts for instance mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if I can use these things as well or if these are just bound to the configuration section of a freestyle. No, thing. these are usable anywhere. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, you're free to use them anywhere, really. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this UI samples package is still very much a work in progress. There's still a ton to add um, and code samples and stuff like that. Um, so if we click the colors, um, we'll show you all the colors that Jenkins currently supports. So you can use them in your, say, charts, for example, or whatever else. Um, this branch is missing quite a few colors, so it's, it's a bit broken, but that's what it looks like right now. Um, if you hit, say, text box, you'll get different text boxes. Um, you'll have different scenarios. So this one supports autocomplete. So if we start typing a state, you'll, you'll get examples. Um, we've got the code for this, although right now it's just broken. Um, we've also got the, the code mirror text box. So you've got the syntax highlighting and stuff like that. Um, got a page for tooltips. So when the tooltips branch is, is updated, you'll be able to use this for your plugins and stuff. Um, just again, things are quite broken just due to the branch of Jenkins I'm running. Um, but yeah, um, so that's the UI samples. It's just going to be a kind of hopefully better organized version of the, the one we had before. Uh, any questions or ideas or anything? Do you need help with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to anything really. 
<laughs> yeah. I think this is really helpful uh, because uh, typically I want to know how to how can I do something and I look into mm -hmm. other plugins and the other plugin makes it wrong and here I can look how to make it right this is a really good idea um one thing I'm struggling with right now actually is is how do we kind of print the, the jelly kind of code on the page without jelly actually like rendering it is it like a tag to, to escape I'm sure, that or? I'm sure there's a raw tag or something right mm -hmm. Wedek might know with the G, uh, G colon row uh, out directly, that should be able to display directly the thing you want. Now, if you are finding a way to automatically display that instead of having to code it yourself, that could be even better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm thinking especially about some of the popular framework where you have all the thing in the code directly. Perhaps it's not the level of detail we want to have for Jenkins, especially for that small plugin in a sense, but uh, that could be good. But normally, yeah, G out should be the, the good thing if you want to include anything inside. Just be careful to not include XSS. That could be nice. Yeah. Sample yeah, But yeah. <laughs> Try that after this. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, UI samples. So Hopefully, I guess this one will look a bit sharper. Um, some other thing we've talked about this before. I think so. This is probably more important than documenting stuff on like Jenkins.io um, is improving this, but how like raising the I guess it's kind of probably more important to focus on improving it right now. But raising the awareness of it, something like should this be automatically installed in Jenkins core? Should this be moved back? It was in Jenkins core originally, I think. Should it be moved back to Jenkins core and an extension point added um, so that plugins can contribute to it because no one's going to update it if it's if they're not forced to as part of their change if they add a new component are they going to add a demo to it if it's in a separate repo um are they going to maintain the docs if it's separated like does does this belong as a separate repo shouldn't it be a demonstration of how to build like we can hide this from users unless they're running in development mode or with a flag or whatever that sort of thing's quite easy um i don't know if anyone's got any thoughts on that What could be the advantage of having that in core directly? So that when someone makes a change to that component is their document, they make the documentation change with their feature change. They introduce a new component, they document the component as part of their change and they can, dem and they can demonstrate their change there. Even if it's something that's for another plugin, they can show in the UI samples that this is how it would be used and this is how it's worked. Um, this is how it works. Yeah, also easier to do any uh, pull request preview and this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was just a bit concerned with the core size because we have a lot of things inside core that are related but not directly related to the code that make the full project a bit slow to compile this kind of thing. So, do you think about a module or mm. what in particular? Yeah, it could be a module for it. Um, I'm not, I think it's more important to improve it. So if we get it improved and we see what it looks like and then um, say early wants to have his plugin data. I mean, he could, I guess he could add a dependency to UI samples, um, API or something, um, but it'd be easier if it was in core. Um, and I feel, I feel like, I mean, obviously this has drifted a lot if things like um, Flash was not updated when whoever removed the flash dependency didn't update UI samples. Um, but they're probably more likely to find it or if it was more used. There's a commit from UI samples plugin. I think it was split from core originally. Yeah, it was part of core in until 1.5.35 or so. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we can go back, but perhaps it might be useful to understand the motivation uh, seven years ago. Nice commit message, Jesse. <laughs> oh, reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's something as a consequence to that, as you can see, it's had very little maintenance since it was split from core. So there's been, base, there's been basically no change since it got split out of core. It wasn't maintained. 
um, I mean, we as core maintainers can say, you've added a new attribute, you need to go update this, but um, then you've got to manage hoax with <laughs> core versions and update the core version over there and um, lining up the PRs and then get someone to merge and release it. Um, like tying your documentation to your code is more likely to get you a better result. So perhaps a bit naive thought, just thinking loudly, what about instead of moving that inside core, moving the thing from core outside? The UI library that are used in core with strong binding with core for sure. But I think it's mainly that part of the code that should be close to that one. Not really the full core. So just thinking loudly, what do you think about moving out the library for the Jelly component? I think it can get harder to update. Um, people are less likely to update um, them though. They're less likely to create a component. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, but And what happens when it fails to integrate? Someone does this change, someone merges it, and then it doesn't get merged in. Um, or does or changes like someone can't roll out a change to the UI samples? I mean, I've I've worked with common lib sort of things before, um, and it makes things more aligned, but it makes the changes more difficult and longer. Like I don't think that's something we need. <laughs> Um, and I will but, bet that your common lib has not that strong binding with the rest of the code. <laughs> uh, well, it was a lot of UI stuff and then, yeah. <laughs> but then it gets updated in one place and not the other place. And, uh, yeah, not a lot of fun. Um, I think the focus should, for now, should just be on improving this. Let's make it nice, make it an exemplar. And then we can see, um, even if we don't move into core, we could possibly find a way to automatically install it through plug and pom something or, or through test harness in some way. Yeah, that could be very nice to have that uh, for the development uh, tooling in general. So I think a lot of people aren't aware it exists. Cool, we got anything else, Jan? Yeah. Um, something I've been playing with is a kind of redesign to the new project screen. Um, Oh, nice. so just because it's it was it was quite old before. Um, so I, idea behind this one is maybe I was, I was being done, but whenever I first started using Jenkins, I'd often get confused between the the ordering of, of things. Um, it wasn't particularly clear you had to click a project type, then it looked particularly clickable. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to copy an existing project type, you'd have to scroll all the way to the bottom it wasn't kind of immediately obvious that you could do that. Um, so I've tried to address that with, with this kind of redesign um, and also add a new kind of drop down component, which is a bit more visual. Um, so I'll just give a demo really. Um, just type hello world. Um, so you hit the, the new kind of drop down and it, it shows you this kind of pop up list um, so the categories are kind of, the, the project types are categorized um, as before. Um, the, the default Jenkins one has a new icon to fit. Um, and it kind of looks just like that really. Um, you select one, which is a freestyle and it pops up. Um, so it's immediately obvious that you've selected a project, you entered a name, you can now hit create. So. Things are simpler, really. Um, if you want to copy an existing project type, you've got this toggle here. So click that, and it'll pop open the kind of copy screen, really. Um, so you hit this, and now you're getting kind of more visual view of your kind of current projects. Um, so I'll now tell you the type, which I thought was handy. Um, and you also have a little icon saying if it's passed or failed or whatever. Um, not terribly sure if that's helpful, but it's just to make, make it more obvious as to what you're actually picking, essentially. Um, so if we can hit freestyle project and that'll just pop in like that. 
Um, that's it really. Um, I think right now it's a little bit broken, so clicking create probably won't work, but yeah, that that's that's the idea really. Um, any comments or, or feedback or anything? Um, so one thing is you copy an existing project, not a type, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so okay. this is a bit of a label issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, then this needs to scale to at least a thousand projects. Mm -hmm. So right now it's a text box where you enter a project name that you can probably copy and paste from a different tab or something. Mm -hmm. um, as shown, this does not seem particularly scalable. Um, mm -hmm. As a comment for the other viewers, if you go back to the project type, mm -hmm. um, this grouping existed before. So if you open it, mm -hmm. um, the standalone projects and the nested projects, this existed. We just yeah. disabled it in Jenkins 2.0 and completely forgot to enable it again. So this has existed for, five, for six years now. Um, so uh, it's great to see this uh, actually make its debut. Um, so this looks actually fairly reasonable. Um, I wonder how this scales. Now, this doesn't have the same kind of scaling issue, but we should mm -hmm. support at least, I think, 10, 15 projects types is probably mm -hmm. reasonable. Um, I know that CloudBeast products have a feature where you can add more project types fairly easily. And so if this has kind of a hard cutoff at 10 and afterwards it becomes unwieldy, that would be a bit of a problem, mm -hmm. uh, both for obviously the Globby stuff, um, as well as if you have a particularly uh, complex instance with a bunch of plugins installed, uh, several of which contribute new project types. Mm -hmm. But um, design-wise, this looks reasonable. Um, how is the... Uh, I see the freestyle project icon is uh, in the new style mm -hmm. uh, and the others are probably just compatible with what already exists in the uh, plugins, right? Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this looks good, assuming the scaling uh, can, can, mm -hmm. is not a problem. So in terms of UI, I will say it's very nice. I will not say even reasonable, but very beautiful in terms of style, very accurate and consistent with the rest of the application that you are revamping. You are improving the user experience in case of copy. Mm -hmm. My concern is just for the regular usage, like I want to create a freestyle job. At the moment, it's one click. In your case, mm -hmm. you have to open the select, then you will see the proposal and then you have to click. That's more about the UX at this point. You are slowing down the process for people who know who, what they want to do and this kind of thing. For the beautifulness of the design, is it really good? Not sure. What you want to do with the, the copy that you mentioned that it was not really a good experience because it was at, uh, at the bottom, with mm -hmm. you moving that to the top, it's a very good initiative. That part, I will say, 100% agree, agree with. Mm -hmm. It's more about the select that you have one click more than the rest of the iteration and potentially even more because if it's not displayed in your first page, for example, if you look for something in the nested project, you will have mm -hmm. to scroll. Before, it was already displayed in the page. Yes, you have to scroll, but it was displayed. It's more about that level, I will say, that could be a bit uh, potentially annoying for some people. I mean, it's consistent with the rest of all web applications that are dumped down. So the same UI can be used for a phone as well as your 27 inch uh, monitor. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a way that you can kind of handle both where you can have an expanded view in some way and a nice, simple, clean view. It's kind of a lot of products these days have like wizards and even, or it even may recommend you a project type. So you Instead of starting with this, you put in your Git repo at the start, and then, um, and you, you like you start with your Git repo, and that's it. Um, or even even starting with your SCM type, and then your Git repo, rather than just dumping you in here and taking you through all these other forms. Um, but also how like 
power users who are creating a lot of pipelines, it can be quick, but for new users, it's really nice, simple experience. Because I think this looks really nice. Um, and I don't know how often a lot of people create jobs. Um, I use multi-branch pipelines for a long time. So for me, it's a very one-off thing. Um, and the other thing is on the copy, even what you've got might be okay if you've got 10 jobs or 20 jobs or to start with, and then maybe it changes to a more scalable component or there's gonna to have to be some typing involved and even, yeah. Right, so, so if you, if you can select the 10 projects or whatever, and then you type to filter it in some manner, a bit like plugin manager available, kind of like we're doing it there, right? You show the top hits and then you need to type to find something else. Um, that would be, I think, a, a viable approach there. That would also mean it's uh, less easy to get it wrong because there's some weirdness if you start out inside of a folder and you provide a project name and the project exists on the top level and the project name exists in the same folder, how do you reference which? And with a more complete, um, uh, with the suggestions you show that can probably be disambiguated uh, because it might actually depend on where you, where you currently are. There's a, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, inconsistency between various form elements that allow referencing projects. So that's actually something where it would be valuable if that would be a reusable component. Mm -hmm. like you can say um, where, that we can plug into plugins like copy artifact, you specify a project name there. Uh, the, the post build step that triggers another project, right? You want to specify something there. And if that would be a reusable component, we can just copy into these plugins that would be useful. But this this does look promising. Great. Awesome. Um, so I'll um I'll write that down and try and kind of iterate on this for next time. Um, I'm trying to have something that's hopefully a bit more scalable for larger organizations. Um, that's basically everything I've got. Um, so awesome. Cheers, everyone. Um, I'll stop sharing. Okay, thank you, John. Jan. Um, let's see. I'll share again the agenda. So, yeah, basically, uh, we are finished with all parts of Jan. Uh, so, if you still have some minutes, I can show you what we are doing in the code coverage plugin. It's more or less a little a feature we, we are new uh, extending so it's not so ui yeah you know, it's not only ui so maybe i'm not sure if everything is interesting but i will show you and you can uh, choose on your own so uh, let's see i think i share the screen and show you what we are doing here uh -huh. I think I share my whole screen. And here we have it. So you should uh, see now, um, I hope you see it now, my um, Jenkins instance in the background. And I think uh, I in introduced uh, our ideas for the code coverage plugin in, uh, in the last meeting. So what we are adding now in the code coverage plugin is the first thing is a new a coverage column which shows you the code coverage this is something i presented already in the last uh, meeting so i'm still we did not finish the coloring thing so this is still a work in progress but what we uh, now introduce uh, or changed we we started to uh, introduce a, a kind of change coverage Currently, the code coverage plugin reports the total coverage of a plugin or a project. That means you see how is your line or branch coverage in your whole project. What is uh, for me, it's more interesting if I am on a pull request, I want to see uh, how good the pull request is. 
So what we are actually uh, computing now is uh, not only the project coverage, which is here, where you see how it's your product project standing. Uh, we are also computing the coverage of a pull request. That means you we are selecting only those files and only those uh, lines in those files that actually have been changed in a pull request. That means here, for instance, we have a code coverage of 100% for the pull request, and the remaining is yeah less than 100%. This is, yeah I think, something which a lot of development teams would like to see just to focus on the differences and not on the whole thing. So this is now new in the visualization that you see these two changes. And what we are currently trying to redesign is the user interface. This is still not finished. It's just a work in progress now. So we have the overview, which is the project overview. What we would like to add is a similar overview for the change coverage. That means you see only the delta of the coverage. And what we also would like to show is uh, we have this kind of a tree map where you see your uh, your code coverage of the whole project. But I think what's more important is to have only the code coverage of your changes. So you see these are the two classes I changed and the code coverage is good or is not so good. So this is uh, one thing we are currently changing and what we are also changing is um yeah this is still not finished so uh, we are also having a second view where we see uh, the individual files of your project and you see the source code now in a side-by-side -side manner that means maybe uh, let's see here it's, um, that means if these are my classes that have a code coverage and now we have a selection here and you see on the right side we have a yeah, let's say master detail view where you select the source code you would like to see and on the right side you see the code coverage of this source code uh, this is currently a yeah, work in progress as already mentioned so it's not yet finished but yeah, i think the student is making a really good progress and it's yeah, a feature which i'm really looking forward to having it in the mainstream I think it will take a couple of weeks until it is finished. Um, so yeah, just want to say, yeah, have a look at it and the pull request. And if you have any comments, feel free to comment. Are there any questions here for this uh, part? OK, thank you. Then, yeah, I think I have no other items on the agenda. Is something else someone would like to add today? Okay, then I think I, we are finished with the meeting today. Thank you, everybody. And let's see us on the next four weeks. Okay, bye bye. Thank you for the organization. Bye -bye.